الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أيها بالله فير الله as he should be feared and they not accept on the state of Islam May Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most merciful Grant us this great gift to die on a state of Islam. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anfal, telling to the believers his gift upon them and upon us. It was after the Battle of Badr. And we would like to start with this ayat because it is a result of a great event that we live these days, that we celebrate with each the new year of Al-Hijrah. And you know the new year of the Hijrah, it was initiated in the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, when they had within the government, they have letters from Umar to the Umara, and they ask Umar, can we have a date just to know which year we are talking about when it comes to to the dead end or to, to a term of certain uh, oath or certain, you know, uh, things that they had. So they start to think what uh, will be the date that they will be start with, because, for example, to the Persian, they were like, you know, the era of the kings, some other, you know, for example, the Arab, they have the days of their, you know, uh, triumph in certain wars, etc. They were thinking, should, you, should it be the birth of the Prophet Wasallam or the beginning of the revelation, or the Hijrah? The whole companion, the one Allah Ta'ala, they have the consensus is to be the Hijrah, because the Hijrah is kind of demarcation between the truth afterward and the falsehood. Between a situation where the Muslim, they were like persecuted, weak, to a situation where the Muslim, they have their land. They have been empowered as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them. But we go to go farther into discussing it about the hijrah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in Surah Al-Anfal about the victory of Badr. And one of the great things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to manifest for us and instruct us is Ma'iyatullah. The Ma'iyah of Allah means like Allah is with you. You have the friendship, you have the alliance, you have the support, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah being with you, call it in Arabic, al-ma'iyyatu. Inna Allah ma'al mu'mineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the triumph that the believer they have in Badr, qala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to them, falam taqtuluhum walakinna Allah qataluhum. Whatever happened in the battlefield is not you who have done it, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his will. You didn't slay them, is Allah slew them. قَالَ وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى Behold, when you were throwing the dust that it get to the eye of all the disbelievers in the battlefield of Badr, it wasn't you, ya Muhammad, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will. It was your action, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who get the target being fulfilled by the will of Allah and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is to have you go and encounter into your life this big trial, but trial that are good. The believers, they go through trials. And these trials, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ بَلَاءً حَسَنًا That good ones. Good one, which is mean, is like you're taking an exam, you are preparing for your exam, and you take the exam, what a great feeling and joy when you get a great result in that exam, and you get, you know, you pass your exam. 
So they examine the trial, and Allah has a blessing upon you that is the result of the exam, that is the admission, that is the joy that you get after the trial. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, you'll be encountering difficulties in Ghazwat Badr and all this fight and all the things, but indeed are a process of purification, process of liberation and process of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevating you to the level that Allah will be with you. Because every sincere believer, he will be invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah to be with him. But we should ask ourselves in reviving and celebrating the new year of Al-Hijrah, how can we elevate ourselves to benefit from Allah being with us, from the ma'iyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the ma'iyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it resides everything you're looking for, everything you're seeking, everything you're longing for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuing this ayat in Surah Al-Anfal, addressing to the disbeliever of Quraysh. He said, قَالَ إِن تَسْتَفْتِحُ فَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ فَتْحِ If you are asking to defeat the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you're asking the victory, actually victory happened, Allah granted to the Prophet and his companion because they are, Allah is with them. وَإِن تَنْتَهُ فَهَوَ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ If you stop and you see what you're doing, that will be good for you. وَإِن تَعُودُ نَعُدْ And if you'll come back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there waiting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with the believer. Even if the big number is not going to help you. If your community comes with the big number, it's not going to help you. Why? Because وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah is with those who believe. In remembrance of the hijrah, we need to remind of ourselves not of the form of the hijrah, not as it being a tradition, not a being like, you know, an occasion that we celebrate and we congratulate each other. If we do congratulate each other at the scholar, they say it's something good. Even though it's not in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu but it's been initiated in time of Umar, but to remind ourselves, to remind ourselves of the meaning of it, to remind ourselves of the depth of the of the lesson that we need to get from it. And we, I would like to share with you today in the remembrance of the hijrah to revive within ourselves the need to elevate our iman to the level to have Allah be with us. Because when Allah be with you, it becomes like a sunnah ilahi, it's like an equation, it's like an Allah, a divine law. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you, if you show piety, Allah will provide for you. It's, subhanAllah, is an equation. There is no, there is no doubt in it. If you trust and you rely on Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient for you. If you will come and fulfill all the condition that of your iman, Allah will give you the triumph, victory, support, and help. Therefore, the help, the support, the victory within the ummah of Islam is embedded in it, is a part of it, is a principle, is one of his mabada. النصر النصر في الإسلام مبدأ من مبادئه triumph victory in the way of Islam it is part of it is a part of it if Subhanallah someone who will not find such a thing in his life for example as an individual level or as a community is because of the shortcoming that the people they have in themselves in their endeavor in their action not in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala way and system and in the ma'iyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that a true sincere believer, he will be calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have. He will be beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have. Is this ma'iyah that Allah will be close to you, that Allah will be near to you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you. It is what every true believer is longing for. He asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. We have it in the hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was with the believer all along the steps of the hijrah. From the time when they plotted against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to kill him, from the time that he was in the cave of Ghari Thawr, from the time that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heading toward Medina, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companion, they have done to have the merit to have to deserve this ma'iyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Because in the ma'iyya, all what you're looking for, as I have said, you'll find it. You'll find the happiness that everyone looking for, you find it in the ma'iyya of Allah. The support and the help, you find it in the ma'iyya of Allah. The triumph and the victory for anything that you're looking for to have as long as it is in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and does not conflict with the way of Allah, it is in the ma'iyya of Allah. All what we do as a prayer is to get close to Allah. Fasting to get close to Allah. Give sadaqah to get close to Allah. What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you already, but then the worship will come to maintain that ma'iyya. How can we have such a may? We would like to, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the beginning, you didn't do all of this, it's Allah who did it. Why? Because it's Allah with you subhanahu wa ta'ala. It truly in Ghazwat Badr, it was like the companion of one Allah ta'ala, they were in the battlefield watching the angel, they were doing their work. Why are they doing that work? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he already granted them the blessing of the Nasr. And this is only to have them be comforted, to have that contentment, to have that joy, even in the battlefield. But the true Nasr is from Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I'm only sending you the angel to comfort you, to have that bliss into your mind, into your heart. And to not be like, you know, worried and scared and frightened into the battlefield. But the result is going to be the Nasr. But this Nasr, not because of the presence of the angel, the Nasr, the victory is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, is the way of the believer in his life. In all the fields, as long as the field that he's looking forward to be in is in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In three simple ayat, we'll go through the whole hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in every step, in every subhanallah station, if you can call it, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help to his Prophet. Allah has a presence, Allah has closeness to his Prophet. Allah has alliance, Allah being all the time with the Prophet and his companion, Radhuan Allah ta'ala alayhi. The first ayah in Surah Al-Anfal, all look at these people of Quraysh, they have this you know, this gathering, plotting what to do for the Prophet Sallallahu It was few days before the hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi You find all the people, the leader of Quraysh, and among them, a man he was not known, an old man, he said, you know, let me be with you. I have, you know, I will, I will help you in finding the right solution. I am a person who is known from Najd. But that person actually was Iblis, la'anahullah. He was part of this meeting. And they were plotting, how are we going to do? Are we going to, what if we imprison the Prophet Sallallahu So this old man, he said, if you imprison him, his Tao is going to come and defeat all these bars that you're going to put the Prophet Sallallahu behind. So it's not a good solution. Some of them, they said, what if we expel him? He said, if we expel him, he's going to have his power outside and come back to you. So Abu Jahl said, we'll get from every tribe or from every family, a one young man and all of them, they gather and we kill him. So Banu Hashem, they will not have the possibility to just retaliate against all the family of Quraysh. They will be then accepting the deer which is the blood money. That's when this old man who is Iblis, he said, this is the great idea. And they plot to do such a thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala wa idh yamkuru bika. And yamkuru comes in al-mudara. Al-mudara, which is in the present and the future. So things that happen all the time is something that as long as you live, there's people who are plotting against you. There will be enemy to you. There'll be envy people to you in anything, subhanAllah. Why? Because anyone who's longing for the dunya, he will not be a true friend to you. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, have a true friend. Your true friend need to be a believer. Why be the believer? He will love you for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He will not love you for the sake of your money or interest that you're going to help him. Therefore, what I'm describing here in the Hijrah is part of our daily life. Is part of our daily life. So, to imprison you or to kill you or to drive you out of your home. They're plotting, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has the planning too, and Allah is the best of the planner. 
So this is from the plotting system and the plotting way. Then look at the second ayah in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to the believer who are being like kindly clinging heavily into Medina to not follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the expedition of Tabuk. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind them as he reminding us today about how to revive the memory of the Ummah. The memory of our subhanallah true history. The history is in what the Prophet Sallallahu did in the depth, in the meaning to understand it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here he said, قَالَ إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ If you're not going to help the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by going with him to Tabuk, which is, was a very difficult expedition, قَالْ Remember that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave him victory when, when he was Subhanallah, leaving Mecca, leaving Mecca, behold, when قال إذ أخرجه الذين كفروا when they drove him out, the disbeliever, him and his friend, ثانية ثانية إذ هما في الغار, behold, they were in the cave. إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن, and he's saying to his friend, do not be sad. Allah is with us. That's the ma'iyya that we're talking about. If you're going to revive today something and to celebrate it as we're celebrating the hijrah, what should we celebrate from the hijrah? Is to celebrate this memory of ma'iyya of Allah. To have a presence in our heart. How can we have back Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with us, to be with this ummah? It seems like difficult, it seems far, but it starts with you. Start by you making your sujood to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you to be a source of barakah yourself, to be someone that he's blessed. And Allah said it in the Quran. The Prophet sallallahu said to Abu Bakr, he didn't say do not fear. He said do not be sad because Abu Bakr, he was not scared. Abu Bakr has a strong iman. He was the truthful as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him. And the Prophet Sallallahu he's a Siddiq. But he was sad. Why sad? Because if the Prophet Sallallahu would have been killed then, there's no Islam today. It would not have been gathered today at all. That's why the Hijrah is a very great event in our life as believers. You do be grateful to Allah for such a thing. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent one of the element of the command that Allah revealed to Musa alayhi salam is to remind his people the days of Allah, the days of God. قَالَ وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Behold, we sent Musa with our signs to drive out his people from darkness to light. And to remind them the days of Allah. What are the days of Allah? The day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and his people from the bondage and from the transgression of the oppression of Fir'aun. Inna fi dhalika la ayat li kulli sabbar and shakur. Those are in these are signs for people who are patient, extremely patient, and people who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an invitation for us when you are enduring trials in your life to be sabbarun and in by being patient, you will have then the taste of meaning of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Bakr, he was not scared. He was sad because of the message of Islam. But the Prophet Sallallahu secured Abu Bakr. He told him, what do you think of two? The third is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We want such a thing to be part of our life. Allah is with us with his knowledge. But Allah is, is he with us with the help, with the support, with the blessing. Is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with us when you call, Ya yeah, Allah, is Allah is with you? That's the ma'iyya as a memory to revive from the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down what Allah would have for you in a position that you have enemy by the door, knocking the door, just checking on you to come only with one purpose to kill you, to get rid of you, to take you out of this life. What do you need at that time? 
Subhanallah, you need help, right? You need help people to help you to come and to save you. Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he did to his Prophet sallallahu He sent down the tranquility in the heart. When someone is knocking and intending bad for you, and you're not scared at all, you're not sad, you feel comfortable inside, you feel joyful inside, that's a miracle. That's what Allah did to his Prophet and to Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. And then brought forces that no one can see. Among them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the seer, they mention the, the web, the spider web, but spider web, something that we see. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qala junudan lam tarawha. You didn't see. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protecting you with million things that you don't see. But for us to revive that memory, if we don't see things that help in us, are we doing enough for Allah to be with us? That's eight the hijrah that we would like to emphasize as subhanallah celebration today of the hijrah. The last ayah from the three ayahs is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Qasas قَالَ إِنَّ الَّذِي فَرَضَ عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لَرَادُّكَ إِلَى مَهَانَ The one that he obligated on you the Qur'an, that he revealed on you the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to take you back to a place of return. He's going to take you back to a meeting, to take you to an appointment, if you can say. Qala ila ma'ad, something that you're going to return to, which is Mecca. And this ayah revealed to the Prophet before even he reached Medina. So if you see, subhanallah, plotting against the Prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him. Seeking to kill the Prophet, and there were but the gate of the of the cave, by the entrance of the cave, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him. And not only helped him, don't be sad, ya Abu Bakr, don't be sad. It's not a question, ya Allah help us, and you're scared and trembling, no, don't be sad. Ya Abu Bakr, don't be sad. It's very powerful. It's not someone screaming for help. It's here, of the Prophet sallallahu asking from Abu Bakr to not be sad. Do not be concerned. Allah is with you. Why should you be concerned? Can we elevate our heart to have this feeling? To have this capacity, this ability, to have this strength of Iman? And the third one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving the glad tidings that you're going to go to back to Mecca. That you're going to have the conquest. That you're going to prevail. That you're going to be empowered. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave this promise to his prophet. Qala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the believers among you those who act in righteousness, that he is going to have them to inherit the part of the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did fulfill that to his Prophet sallallahu in Medina. As he did for the people before you. And he empowered your deen. So you have the stability. You're not going to be like running away from place to place and hiding to make your prayer. You're going to be making your prayer and Adhan and Bilal is going to call to the prayer. You're not going to be doing it in Dar al-Arqam ibn al-Arqam, hiding. No, not anymore. You're not going to be, ya Muhammad, going from person to person to help you to find a place where to make your da'wah, where you're going to convey your message. It's going to have a whole state belonging to you that you're going to be leading. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Prophet This is the wa'd. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled all of that to his prophet. That's the memory that we need to revive in ourselves, in our community, within ourselves, within our families. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you things in the Quran, he said, have taqwa, I'll provide for you. And this is part of the memory that we need to revive in ourselves from the hijrah. The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll take only one event. One event in the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One event. He came to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and all of you, you know the story. 
قال يا علي نم على فراسي وتسجى بهذا ببرد ببرد هذا الحضرمي الاخضر فانه لن يخلصك مما تكره ابدا او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا علي كم ان سليب ان ماي بيد يو نو اول ذا ستوري And cover yourself with my border. This one from Hadrami is like made in Yemen, the green one, which is mean that Subhanallah, everyone like cover yourself, which is mean like this guy's like it's me. Nothing that you dislike will will touch you. It will never. Nothing get to you from what you're thinking that you might be hurt of. Two characteristic we withdraw from this position that we need to have in ourselves, struggle to elevate, to soak our heart with it. The first thing, Ali radiallahu ta'ala, how come he will sleep soundly when he knowing that he might be killed in the place of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? This is a question for all of you. Why? Because we are celebrating the Hijrah. How come? Because he believed in the Prophet. The Prophet told him, you're not going to be hurt. And this is what Allah is telling us in his Quran. Therefore, we don't need to believe in the Quran. We need more than that. We need to have certainty because if you acknowledge what is in the Quran, it's fine, alhamdulillah. If we believe is another step, to be certain is a higher step. But to be certain with an action, what is this action? Is to have tranquility in your heart while you are waiting for the promise of Allah to be fulfilled. Ali radiallahu ta'ala slept soundly. Mutma'inna al-bal. Mutma'in. Comforted, tranquility. He might have dreamed. While subhanAllah, he might have been killed that night. Why? Because his trust, his subhanAllah, his belief in the promise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa That's what we need to revive in ourselves. Do you truly believe in what Allah is telling you in the Quran? When we talk about the provision, do you truly believe if you show piety, Allah will provide for you from way that you do not expect? Do you truly believe when you rely on Allah, Allah is sufficient for you? We need to believe in that and elevate it to a certainty. And this certainty will be expressed with tranquility in heart while we are enduring the difficulty in our life. That's how we revive the meaning and how we revive the aspect and the element and the characteristic into the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The second one, it is the sacrifice. People, they sacrifice their own self for their children, for their families, for their money, they do it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you do such a thing, you die shaheed. Do you have any sacrifice that you do for the deen of Allah? Sacrifice, it means that he's very dear to your heart. Is Allah dear to our heart? That's how we revive the memory of the hijrah. How dear Allah is in your heart. How dear is the deen of Allah is in your heart. And we should not look at the sacrifice with the negative connotation. When he says sacrifice, who sacrificed himself for the people to live. No, that's not the sacrifice in Islam. Sacrifice in Islam is to live forever. Sacrifice to Islam to be a blessing for others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned those who are waiting to die in the sake of Allah, to die like working, to die acting, to die fighting, to die building, he said, for those who are already dead, in Ghazwat Uhud, qala, farihina bima atahum Allah min fadli. وَيَسْتَبِشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ They are happy with what Allah gave them. They are alive. The sacrifice in Islam give you life. 
You don't do it because of others. You do it for yourself to be a blessing for others. قَالَ فَرِحِينَ بِمَا أَتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ They are happy and rejoicing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them from his mountains. And they are thinking of their brother they are still alive. They are in the low world. They said you should not have any fear. You should not have any grief. We are waiting for you. Therefore, the sacrifice in Islam, like in the image or the event of Ali radiallahu ta'ala, an, he gave his life. Why? Because he trusts, he believed in the Prophet sallallahu he believed in Allah with that comfort of the heart and that tranquility. And that's today to revive this memory of the hijrah. We don't revive it as a tradition with certain dishes like they do in the Muslim world. We revive it with the meaning, with the action. We revive it, how can we elevate our Iman for Allah to be with us? Because we truly need for Allah to be with us. Allahumma aj'alna ma'aka ya arham ar-rahimin wa arzuqna ma'iyyatak aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru al-ghafur al-rahim. بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى أما بعد. When the companions of one Allah تعالى عليهم they were trying to define which month will be the beginning of the of the year. They said the Hijrah happened in Rabi' al-Awwal, and Rabi' al-Awwal where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was born. But they said Umar radiallahu ta'ala said you said we'll do it in Muharram. Why in Muharram? Why in Muharram? It's the last sacred month. That's one thing. But one great wisdom in Muharram is after Ramadan and after the Hajj. So after Laylatul Qadr and after the Hajj, the completion of the whole submission to Allah and then comes, subhanAllah, the beginning of the year to revive all the things, to contemplate on the beauty of the worship that you've been having all this time of the year from Ramadan to the Hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us another great example. If we have in Shahr Muharram and soaking with our heart what we have, subhanAllah, in the Hajj, we just finished the Hajj. And before Hajj, we have Ramadan. And then in Muharram is the time of reflection. And the time of reflection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you another gift. In the 10th of the Muharram. If you fasted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expiate a whole year of sins past year. And what is this 10th of Muharram? It was the Hijrah of Musa alayhi salam. When the Prophet Sallallahu came to the Medina and we find the Bani Israel, they are fasting this day and he asked it and he already know to teach us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said, this is a day. Qala hadha yawmu salih. This is a great day. Qala najja Allahu fihi Musa alayhi salam min Fir'aun. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, he saved Musa from Fir'aun and Musa, he fasted this day for that occasion. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we do fast it. Therefore, we are celebrating by reviving the memory and having the gift of fasting to remind ourselves the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by this remembrance of the days of Allah, to make us sabbarina wa shakkareen, to be patient and to be grateful, to be those who trust in Allah, to be elevated our iman to the level to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with us. Ya Allah, elevate our iman and liberate us from the prison of the dunya and liberate liberate our souls from subhanallah the magnetic field of this dunya ya allah iktubna fi illiyin allahumma ighfir lana dhunubana ajma'in allahumma makkin al imana fi qulubina ya arham ar rahimin allahumma arzuqna ma'iyyataka ya akram al akramin wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa aqim as salata yarhamukum allah allahu akbar allah